What's up guys, I'm Lauren and welcome back to my channel where we talk about money and mindset as well as my family's own journey to pay off six figure debt. So if you like videos like that, then make sure you hit that red subscribe button to follow along. Today, I am back. I took a week off of posting videos um, because I am actually working on another exciting project behind the scenes. I've been working on it for several months now and I just got to a point where I really wanted to put a lot of time into it last week. So I just didn't have time to film all my normal videos and work on the project. So yeah, I am really excited to share with you guys about it. I'll be talking about it sometime in the next couple weeks. So watch for that announcement. But yeah, it's something I've been working on and I'm just like I can't wait to tell you guys about it. Today we are sitting on my couch because I'm tired and pregnant and it's warm over here and I just want to be comfortable. But yeah anyway what's this video about? This video is our March budget with me so I like to film two budget videos a month and one is a budget with me video before the month starts and then another one is our budget recap after the month has ended and so I can show you guys how we did for the month, keep myself accountable, show you guys exactly how we like to budget so you can maybe learn some of the things we're doing to budget while we're working on paying off so much debt and all that good stuff. So we're looking at the March budget and what else? Oh, if you like the budget spreadsheet that I'm using, then you can get it yourself on my Etsy shop. It's an instant download to Google Sheets and it comes with a detailed video tutorial along with me every month, as I said, posting my own budget videos using the spreadsheet. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is our March budget, and so I'm gonna go through this budgeted column, which is what we do before the month starts for all of our fixed expenses, debts, pay yourself first, sinking funds, all that good stuff, and tell you guys what we've budgeted for the month. So we are expecting total income of $12,318. Now this is the gross budget. So gross is just what your paycheck actually is before your deductions come out, like health insurance and taxes and stuff. So we have decided to stick with the gross budget. The spreadsheet comes with gross and net. Net is just what actually hits your bank account. So if you like to budget uh, just off the number that hits your bank account, then that's great. But I do like the gross one because I have this pie chart down here and it includes like all our 401k contributions, which are pre-tax out of paychecks and stuff. So it kind of gives us a better sense percentage wise of where our money's going for the month. So I've been going back and forth between the two for like a year. And that's why I like budgeting. It takes like, it evolves over time. It's a skill. It's not something that you just are good at overnight. Like you have to practice and like figure out what works for you and what makes sense and stuff. And evolve and change as you figure out more stuff. So let's take a look at our gross budget. So taxes that are scheduled to come out of our paychecks are $240 and then insurance is $398. And that may be going up in April because my husband's open enrollment is in March, which like it starts April 1st for new like health insurance and anything like that. So usually the cost of health insurance goes up at least a little bit every year with inflation. Like I'd be shocked if it didn't go up this year because everything's more expensive and yeah, anyway. So I, this will be the last month that it's that amount. I'm expecting it to go up next month. So anyway, for taxes and insurance, this kind of like turquoise section, the total is $2,438. And that's all stuff that comes directly out of like my husband's paycheck and like what I'm taking out of my YouTube income for taxes and stuff. And then also coming out of my husband's paycheck are his 401k contributions. So we are working on maxing out his 401k this year, which has a limit of $20,500. So every single paycheck, $788 comes out and that will be pretty much getting us there. So I don't know if we'll be able to do that. We might have to pull back a little bit on those contributions at some point if our budget gets too tight, but so far we're trying to swing it and figure it out. So yeah, that's what we're doing for this month. And then for after-tax brokerage, we've got $50 going to after-tax brokerage. And usually that's been more like 300 every month. Well, every month, there's only been two months before this. So January and February, we put more like 250, 300 to brokerage and um, like $50 to extra debt payments. And I flipped it this month because I was just feeling like the need to pay more towards debt because I'm just so used to making these big debt payments and 
Um, yeah, so it's just been a little bit lower income at the beginning of the year this year, and I'm hoping our income will increase the second half of the year. But yeah, for now, I just wanted to switch this month. So you'll see when we get to the debt section, that extra payment is a little bit bigger. So it's kind of flipped, but we're still putting $50 to our brokerage account this month, or at least budgeted that. And so yeah, I'm hoping we can definitely do that. I think we can do that. So total of four savings slash retirement. This should really say investing total investing um, is $1,626 for the month. And like, I, I need to not gloss over that. We are paying almost $3,000 this month towards debt, not including our mortgage. And our mortgage is another almost 2000. So we're paying $5,000 towards like debt basically this month. And then on top of that, we're still putting over $1,600 towards investing. And that's just like, I sometimes forget how far we've come over the past couple years. Like I am, I think if I heard those numbers a couple years ago, I would just like not really believe that we'd be able to do that and that I would have been able to quit my job as an attorney to run my own business. And so, yeah, I'm just really grateful that we're able to accomplish all those things. Like that's not a small amount of money, 1600 a month. And I'm happy that we're putting close to 15%, if not 15% of our money every single month towards investing for retirement. All right, next we've got our debt section. So my husband's student loan has a minimum payment of $830. Mine has a minimum payment of 1882 And then, like I said, we are putting $241 towards extra debt payments, which will go towards my student loan because that's the one we're targeting right now. It has the highest balance, um, but it also has the highest interest rate. So it's very slight. It's only like 0.15% more interest wise, but it's also the debt that's like really stressful for me. Whereas my husband's student loan doesn't stress him out as much and doesn't stress me out as much. So yeah, we're focusing on getting my loan paid off. And so $241 extra is going to that debt this month. At least that's what we budgeted for. And I don't want to jinx myself by saying this, but I'm just going to say it anyway, I'm like, I'm not superstitious, but I am anyway. So <laughs> every time we've planned to pay extra towards debt since I've started sharing it on my YouTube channel, we have met or exceeded that number every single month. And so it just like, I feel like being accountable to you guys is really helpful. And that's a big part of why I share my numbers is because I, well, two reasons. One, I want other people to know that like this is real life finances and like if you're in a bad situation like we are, you're not alone, you're not a bad person, you didn't do anything wrong, you're not dumb. Like I'm not a dumb person, I'm extremely smart, like I went to law school. But I'm still having trouble figuring out how to get our debt paid off because it's not like an intelligence thing, it's an emotional thing. And I have some emotional stuff that I've been working on in therapy for many years. So yeah, I just like want, that's one reason why I share all my numbers. And then two, because it keeps me accountable. Because obviously like when I share with you guys, I feel like somebody else is expecting me to follow through and I'm expecting myself to follow through. It's not just something I told myself in my head that I would do I actually it's like said it out loud on camera. There's video evidence of what I've promised myself that we were going to do this month. So I've been able to stick to it every month so far. And I've been sharing our numbers for over a year now. I started sharing in, I think it was about September of 2020. And now this is obviously March of 2022. So yeah. Anyway, so total debt payments for March is $2,953. All right, let's go over to the fixed expenses. These don't change much month to month, maybe a little bit if something goes up, but basically stay the same. So we've got our condo fee, mortgage, life insurance for me and my husband. We each have a policy, internet, home security, car insurance, our one subscription, which is Spotify and miscellaneous. Usually we put 50 in miscellaneous, but I'm bumping it down to 25. I just want to see what happens because like, we, every time it's 50, we like hit about 50. But if I put it at 25, would we stick to 25? Like, is are we spending $50 in miscellaneous because it's there? Or is it because we really need $50? So I'm doing an experiment this month to see how much we spend in miscellaneous. So we'll circle back at the budget recap for March and see how we did and for $25 of miscellaneous. And we have a bunch of sinking funds for like everything under the sun, as you'll see in just a second. And so there's like, it just feels like there's rarely a miscellaneous expense that doesn't fit into one of the sinking funds somehow. So the total fixed expenses for the month is $2,391. And then finally our sinking funds. So we've got our emergency fund. So yeah, it's at $9,000. I really wanna get it up to 10, 
but I just can't bring myself to put any money towards it right now because just I want to get our debt paid off and it just feels difficult to put extra money towards the emergency fund right now like we could put the $241 towards the emergency fund but I just I'd rather put it towards debt so anyway it may stay at $9,000 this year I don't know we'll see it, hopefully it'll go up to 10 at some point but it's nine for now which is one month of necessary expenses so that's fine so yeah nothing for the emergency fund this month and then Groceries, we are putting $1,200 to groceries this month. We usually do $250 a week. So there must be five Wednesdays in March. And so that's why I put $1,200. Usually I do $1,250. But again, I'm doing a little experiment this month to see if we can cut our groceries by just $10 a week, which would be $50 less for the month. So $240 a week gives us $1,200 for five weeks. Groceries have been expensive lately, so hopefully I'm not being totally unrealistic with this, but we have been pretty much sticking to our grocery budget. It's been going okay. And even with inflation and all that, and like uh, if you haven't watched my videos before, like this is a lot for groceries for some families, but we buy like 90% organic stuff just because that's something that's really important to us and that's the point of a budget. So you can budget based on things that are a priority for you and make sure you're not spending frivolously on things that aren't important. So yeah, groceries is a huge thing. We include our like household items in that. So toilet paper, paper towels, soap, like, you know, laundry detergent, all that comes out of that same budget and any takeout that we get, which honestly is like so rare. We maybe get takeout once a month. So yeah, it's mostly just groceries because we buy like organic fruits and vegetables and other stuff organic when we can. So yeah, that's that. And then vacation fund isn't getting anything this month. My husband's spending, he gets 200 a month and I usually get 200 a month, but I'm just taking 150 this month because I just want to put more towards debt. So that's why I'm doing that. My daughter gets 150, baby number two gets 100 right now. We're gonna need to up that at some point, but for now, at least $100 going to her fund. We've got like March, April, May, June. So we've only got three months of budgeting after this budget before she's here. She might even be here in June because I'm due July 7th, but I don't think I'm gonna go full term or at least my doctor's probably gonna like say I can get induced at 39 weeks because that's what happened last time because I had gestational diabetes and they just thought I was safer. So anyway, yeah, I, whatever, I'm rambling a little bit. But baby number two for now is getting $100 and we'll see how that goes. Kids activities has been $50 but I bumped it up to 100 because I finally enrolled my daughter in gymnastics and she absolutely loves it. She's obsessed, like she jumped right in like nothing, like she had been there the whole, whole life and she just has such a blast. So it's been such a fun experience to go do an activity with her. I just can't even explain to you how fun that's been. So it's $95 a month and then there was some like initial sign up fees and stuff and like we had to pay for the initial class, like a sh smaller fee to do like a test class. And so yeah, $100 a month should be about right for that, but it doesn't leave room for any other activities. And I do wanna get zoo passes for the summer as well. So I'm trying to figure out like, where to take that money from. I'm thinking maybe I'll take it from her fund for her pass and my own fund for my pass and then I don't need to up anything. So yeah, but I don't know how much they are because we didn't do it last year. So I need to go look and see. So $100 a month for kids activities and then my cat Miles gets 150. That covers his vet visits, his pet insurance, his food, his medication, everything he needs. That's been pretty good. And then gas, we usually put 100, but I'm just putting 50 this month. We may need to up it because I am driving more places. But again, I just want to put as much to debt as possible. So if we can get by with one fill up, we don't go that many places. Or when we do, we don't drive that far. So it has been like, okay, we've been spending between 50 and 100 a month, depending on the month if my husband and I both fill up or just one of us fills up. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. That might have to get increased too. Gifts, 75, we usually put like 100, but I just did 75 this month. And then home decor, I'm not putting anything. And car maintenance and house maintenance are each getting 50. Cell phone always gets 150. Town sewer and water always gets 85. And then utilities always gets 300. When you see the February budget recap, you're gonna see how much our utilities were this month. They were, uh, they're a lot, they're a lot. So yeah, we'll see how long that 300 lasts. That's gonna have to increase, at least for like, I don't know, 
we'll see. It's going to have to increase a little bit, at least for a couple months, until we get to like spring weather and it gets warmer. It's still very cold here in New England. Like we had a couple warm days where it was nice and then it like snowed a bunch again. And it's just, it's been like a really long cold winter. So hopefully it starts warming up soon and we get to decrease our gas use and for our heating. So guys, that's a really big expense. And yeah, so anyway, utilities is 300. And then Christmas slash Aria B day, my daughter's birthday, she'll be three in May. I don't expect needing that much money for her birthday. Like we'll probably get her a couple little things. We'll have like a small little get together um, for her. And yeah, I just like, I don't plan to go too crazy. When she's older and she actually pays more attention and she has preferences, I wanna go all out for her. And we'll be closer to debt free, if not debt free by the time she really has more of an opinion about her own party. But for now, while we're paying off debt, I think keeping it small and just like, you know, the, the funny thing is like with kids, like you can get them a present, but then like they enjoy the box more. Or like we, she has all these toys and then she likes like putting laundry away with me. Or what was the other thing the other day she really liked doing? Oh, getting, getting like painter's tape and just like sticking it on the wall. That entertained her for a long time. Yeah, it's just funny. Kids like, they like household stuff more than their own toys sometimes, especially I found like at her age because it's just like something they don't usually get to play with. So it's more exciting and fun. So anyway, $100 a month um, should be good. By the time we get to her birthday, should be more than plenty. And then the rest will go towards Christmas for the rest of the year, like whatever's left in that fund. So total for sinking funds is $2,910. So as you can see, our left to budget is zero. So like that's how I figure out how much I'm putting towards debt for the month. I fill out everything and like play around with it a little bit and then whatever is left here is what I know I have to put towards extra debt payments because that is our number one financial priority right now. So yeah, left to budget is zero and as you can see down here for our budget summary, and then our budgeted actual will fill in once we fill in all the actual numbers. But yeah, the budgeted summary, you can see about 20% is going to taxes and insurance. So 19.8% is going to taxes and insurance. And again, that's income taxes, social security, everything that comes out of my husband's paychecks and that I put aside from my own income for taxes and then health insurance. So that's the only type of insurance that's coming out of there is health insurance. And then pay yourself first is 13.2%. So we try to have this be at least 15% every month, but because I lowered the brokerage account contributions and increased the debt payments this month, it's at 13.2%. So technically it's a little higher because my husband gets a match on his 401k, but I don't count that in our budget. So yeah, 13.2% to pay yourself first. And then 24% of our money is going towards debt not including our mortgage, just towards our student loan debt. So 24% of our gross income is going towards debt this month. So that's a very solid chunk of money. That's at least usually how much it is. And yeah, it's just, that's like how much your mortgage should be. Your mortgage should be like 24% of your income or so. Fixed expenses is 19.4% of our income. And then sinking funds is 236 so that is where all our income is going for the month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you like the spreadsheet, you can get it yourself in my Etsy shop. It is linked below. And I also have a debt payoff spreadsheet, an annual financial goal tracking spreadsheet, and I sell all of them in a bundle as well for a discount. If you get all three of them, you get a little bit off the price that they would be individually. So I will link all that below. If you like this video, as always, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this from me, then hit that red subscribe button down there. I'd love to have you as a subscriber and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye.